Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this quick tips video, we're going to be taking a look at integrating our 3D printer into Home Assistant with Octoprint and we're going to try to cover it in less than 10 minutes. This integration is awesome for adding a camera view of our 3D printer into Home Assistant and for monitoring the printer remotely. So while I roll the intro, take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week and let's get started. So if you've got a 3D printer, I highly recommend adding Octoprint to it if you haven't already. Octoprint lets you add a webcam, a web interface, and loads of plugins to help you manage your 3D printer a lot easier. And it sure beats moving an SD card back and forth if your printer doesn't already have network connectivity. I'll be taking a deeper dive into Octoprint in a future video. All you really need to get set up is a Raspberry Pi, a Pi 3 or better is generally recommended and obviously you'll need a 3D printer and then the things to support the Pi like an SD card and power cable. A basic USB webcam is optional but recommended. In my case my 3D printer is a Prusa i3 Mark III. I have a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and a power over ethernet hat because you know how much I love my power over ethernet, but also because with the Pi that I've been using, I've found that it complains if it's running from USB power or any other kind of five volt source, and it tends to throttle itself very heavily, causing problems with prints. Plugged into the Pi, I've got an old 720p Microsoft LifeCam and the USB cable for the printer. Now my Octoprint instance has been running for quite a while, but I want to integrate it into Home Assistant so I've got a nice way to see that data, even if I'm away from home and running a long print. To do that, I'm going to need to get an API key from my Octoprint server. So I have got my Octoprint here on my laptop and I'm going to click on the spanner icon here to go to configuration. I'm going to click on this API menu item down the left hand side and I'm going to click on this icon here to copy the API key and I can then close that screen. Now that I've got that, I need to then pop over to Home Assistant and into my VS Code integration. So we will go over to Home Assistant and we're on my demo instance here. We'll open Visual Studio Code. Now, for the purposes of getting this set up, I've already entered the details of my Octoprint to host and API key into my secrets.yaml file. To set up the actual Octoprint integration, I'm over in my configuration.yaml file and I'll just scroll to the bottom. So to begin with, I'm just going to put a comment here and say Octoprint configuration and then domain is Octoprint host and we're using bang secrets Octoprint underscore host. Our API underscore key is bang secrets Octoprint underscore API underscore key. So now that I've got my host and my API key, I could let this go, but I do need a couple of other things because uh, there's more information that I want to gather. Now I'm putting in bed true. Uh, bed true means that it's going to monitor the heated build plate. And I'm also going to put in here number underscore of underscore tools. And I'm putting one in there because it's only got the single hot end on my Prusa. I'm going to save that change and there's something else that I want to add in here to get the camera details across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the camera domain here and I'm going to put in platform and the platform is MJPEG, uh, moving JPEG. The name is going to be, oh, I need to put that, I need to get this indentation sorted. So I'm going to put the name is going to be 3D printer. And then I need the MJPEG URL and the best way to get this, if I go over to my Octoprint instance, I can right click on the webcam view and then I can open the image in a new tab and then we see we've got this address here. So if I copy this address, hop back over here and paste this uh, webcam stream in here, that is then going to give me that image as the camera in Home Assistant. 
So that's got the camera, but there is still one more thing that I want to add, and that's a nice Lovelace card to help visualize the data in a pretty way. And for that, I'm going to head over to Hacks, and I'm going to go to the front end menu here, and I'm going to click the three dot stack menu in the top right hand corner, and I'm going to click on custom repositories. And I'm going to add a custom repository URL in here, which is https colon slash slash github.com slash Dan Greco slash 3D. And the category, I'm going to put that as Lovelace and click add. And so now we've got the 3D uh, integration there. So if I take a look at that, uh, and we'll click on install this repository in hacks, and then I will click install. Uh, so now it needs me to reload the browser. So we'll do that now. And we've got the 3D card there. What I'm also going to do to make that actually useful is I'm going to go to configuration, and then I'm going to go to Lovelace dashboards, and go to resources and we can see that the hex files 3d 3d card has been added already as a javascript module uh, sometimes that doesn't automatically happen and i've had that problem in my production instance when i was testing this for this video okay so now that we have all of these things in place we can go to configuration we can go to server controls, we will check our configuration, and because we have modified our configuration.yaml file, yes, you guessed it, we're going to restart Home Assistant and click OK. Okay, so now that Home Assistant has restarted, we should now start seeing some new entities in our sensor section. So let me find those. So we've got sensors and we see we've got Octoprint time elapsed, all of these uh, Octoprint items here. And we can uh, drill in and, and see the status of those as well if we wanted to. Now, obviously this display isn't particularly exciting and that's why we added the 3D card from Hacks. So I'm going to head over to our demo dashboard and we're going to customize it. So I'll click on the three dot stack, click edit dashboard. I'm going to click on add card and we're going to scroll through here and provided we've added it as a resource, we have this custom 3D card here. So I should be able to click that and click on the printer and select Octoprint. Fantastic. So printer type is an i3. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Mr. Robot. And I want to monitor status. I want to monitor ETA. I want to monitor elapsed. I want to monitor hot end, bed, and remaining. I want all of these things, but what I might do is change the order. So I will move the remaining up to uh under status and the elapsed just below there uh, and you can actually see a live update of what that looks like there i'm going to click on advanced and we'll leave the theme as it is the font i'm going to change to roboto uh, the scale we will leave at one i'm not going to round the time i'm not going to round the temperature we are using temperature in celsius i will put 24 hour time for the camera entity i'm going to click the drop down and we're going to select camera 3d printer so we've got that camera there and I won't use the power or the light entity just yet. I do have a light strip on my 3D printer, but it's not currently powered. Uh, so we'll look at that in another video. Now that I've done that, I'm going to hit save. And we have our 3D printer card there. If I close that, we can click on there and it pops and changes to the camera of the 3D printer and we can see what the printer is doing right now. And if I click it again, it will go back to this display where it's just the animated thing and the status. So as you can see with a bit of work, we got our 3D printer data into Home Assistant and with the 3D card by Dan Greco, it can be displayed quite nicely on our dashboard. The custom card is of course optional but I do think it adds a very nice touch. And now that this data is in Home Assistant, there's nothing stopping you from piping that data out into something like InfluxDB and then visualizing it using Grafana to figure out how much it's costing to run the heater elements on your printer or figure out other things. That's all I have for this video and I do hope that it's helped you in your home automation journey.
Be sure to comment down below with home automation ideas you'd like to see me cover in a future video and let me know what you're 3D printing these days. Don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and those links are in the video description down below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button to give it a like and if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing now. While you're at it, please hit the bell icon so you get notified when I release new videos each week. Lastly, if you enjoy what I do here and you want to help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Contributions made through the buy me a coffee link are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.